Hello at Bags, this is Jay Plays Games back again with another Arc Survival Evolve news update video. So guys, if you're waiting for the Xbox Update 756 or the PlayStation Update 510, you're going to be waiting until next week at the earliest. 3rd of July is the ETA at the moment. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about even more updates coming. Wildcard have worked on the biggest update since the last biggest update. They've just completed work on update version 2.6.0 and there's over 80 new bug fixes and added things to it. The Sabertooth has received a brand new model. It's also got some new capabilities. You get more hide and pelt harvesting from it now when you actually kill something. And you can take less fall damage. The tech trail, the thing you thought you never needed but you probably really do, is powered by a tech generator. This trail refrigerates food and keeps it fresh longer. There's a new host option for dedicated, non-dedicated and single player games. You can now allow multiple platforms on saddles. So if you want to build that massive hotel on top of a titanosaur platform saddle, go ahead and do it. You can now improve the quality of the loot crates and the fishing loot. Again, these are all obviously options just for non-dedicated, dedicated and uh, single player games. Like I told you guys before as well, they have added an option so you can have unlimited respecs so you don't have to worry about the limit that is now going to be implemented with mind wipes on official. There's now an ability to disable respawn animation. I got that one wrong, sorry guys. I thought it was going to be um, respawn animals, but no, clearly not. Crafting skill bonus multipliers now properly shown in the host menu. Yes, get in. And this one's going to put my videos out of business. I'm literally not going to have to do the final, final, final settings um, video because they've added tooltips to all the host settings in the host menu. Jen put this tweet out earlier today and look, beside every single option there is a tiny little box that will tell you exactly what it does. So that's me out for business. I'm going home. Right, that's it. I'm terminating my YouTube account. That was the first video that made me blow up a little bit, that got me thinking I could do YouTube, really go for it. So I'm a bit sad that it's been taken away from me. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Wildcard. Thanks, thanks, Ark. They've changed some things to the default server settings. Crosshairs, TPV camera and PVP gamma are all enabled by default now. Crafting requirements are now listed alphabetically. Tribes are now automatically created in single player. Placement outline on structures now indicates direction via arch colour change. They've added improved hovering animation to Argent and Patera. Rework boss summon requirements have specific artifacts for each of the bosses. So no longer can you just go and get the same sort of stuff and have it like back catalogued. You're going to have to go and get some of this brand new stuff to summon each individual boss. And this is one of the actual things that you're going to need. It's a heart from a giga. I'm really glad they've done that actually. It adds just a little bit more variety again and, and makes each boss something special. Like you have to go and do a certain manner of steps, a certain number of things to do to tackle that boss rather than just building up a big supply of just the same stuff to summon it. Some of the things that are included are Bazillo Blubber, Spino Sail, UE Lungs, Aloe Brain, Ferrazino Claws, Phylaco Hook Claw, Megalania Toxin and Sarco Skin. Also, Titan Boa Venom. Kibble recipes for kibble added to the loot table from Wild Dinos. Changed artifact crates into the proper artifact mesh. A few other little ones. I'm not going to go through every single one. I'm just going to pull out the, the ones that I think are the most exciting or important. Loads of improvements to animations and stuff like that on some of the creatures. They're all getting swimming animations now and they can all attack in water. All land dinos can now attack in water, guys bunch of sound improvements as well for doing things like jumping and eating. Biome specific combat music now plays when a player is on a creature so no matter where you are on the map you may get a different type of music when you're attacking something. Increased level of crave, crave? Increased levels of cave creatures, oh no. So they've just fixed it and they've decided just to go gun ho and put another two million creatures in there, thanks. They've changed some of the tech requirements for some of the gear. You won't have to actually use Element now for the tech teleporter, and it will only cost half the amount to run on the tech generator, I do believe, or reduced it a little bit. I don't know how you feel about that one with the tech teleporter. Have you actually had anyone raid you using the teleporter, like to get close to your base? Or is it simply one of them things that is just used as a luxury item to get around the map? To fix some of the problems with the corpse locator, we haven't actually seen this yet because we're still waiting for the update on Xbox and the PS4. 
but hopefully it means that we're going to get the fixed version not the broken version but you will now be able to find the lighter beam will actually highlight the bag and not just the player fixed exploit where the two so could reach through terrain the fixed the argent not being able to pick up titan bow and alpha pleura fixed the tames itchy from swimming in circles around battles or around corpses they fixed the problem where everyone would cluster together when you teleported towards a boss. That is such a big issue that always used to happen. You have to punch each other off to get going. They fixed two infinite weight exploits. Where were they? I've never seen them. Seems the two souls had a bit of love and a care attention put to it. Lots of little issues fixed with it. Fixed an issue where explorer notes were moved around to incorrect locations. Can you imagine that? You've spent like two hours getting all the explorer notes and you're trying to find that one last one, but it's actually been moved somewhere. Fixed issues with Primitive Plus where supply drops were not present. Fixed issue where improper coal was harvestable in Primitive Plus. Go on, yes. They've changed the spelling of Esperanis egg. Well done. Fixed engrams not displaying in the correct order. Changes with the LODs look better on low viewing distance. They've added proper saddle icons for the Procopticon and the Basil. They've prevented multiple floors from being built underneath rafts and platform saddles. <gasps> no! So long live to all them people that have made them boats. They're going to be pretty useless now. I wonder if they'll dismantle or they'll just not, they won't be there when you go to it. Slingshot does 25% less torpor per hit. No! Spear impact volume increased by 20%. They've nerfed the direwolf hide harvesting capability a little bit. Increase the speed of crop growth and beer barrel in single player when using single player settings. Double the rate of oil and element consumption in single player only on the gas generator and tech generator. Cost of gasoline in single player has been increased to 6 oil and 5 hide. Artifact respawn time is set to 30 minutes in single player. Ah oh no, no more just standing there for a couple of minutes, that is awful. Allow the trophy wall mount and base to be paintable. Fixed flyers you can base on from consuming more food that are intended. So there we go guys, I don't know if they're necessarily as exciting as the previous patch. This was the other biggest one that was just had so much stuff in it, but it is actually got less stuff there than the, the patch that's just come in. You guys let me know, obviously on Xbox and PS4 you won't have seen either of these updates just yet and you won't see them until next week. Wildcard decided not to obviously go ahead with the console um, updates because there was an issue and they did say at the time that they was going to add even more content from the latest PC update. So it does look like if it's coming on next week we could probably get both of these versions. So that's going to be over 150, 160 bug fixes. Obviously we haven't got that completely confirmed if they're going to sort of mix both updates into one but they definitely said they were going to be trying to implement a lot of the actual stuff. So there we go guys, that is an update done and dusted, it should be live now on PC, let me know if it still hasn't dropped, it literally only apparently dropped a couple of hours ago. I know a lot of you were worried about Ragnarok not dropping on time next week and looking at all the comments last night over the last few update videos you really are thinking it's not going to happen. I think Ragnarok is going to launch on Tuesday, I don't think there's going to be a problem. When you look at all them patch notes, you go through every single one of them, there was hardly anything related to Ragnarok. Now I know Ragnarok has its own um, update status, so it does have its own little tiny little section just like Primitive Plus does, but they have put some issues that were obviously affecting the core game in the actual patch notes, the big patch notes. So I honestly don't think there's going to be a problem with it, I think it's going to drop on Tuesday. Whether or not the other updates drop by then, who knows. They obviously gave this update, they obviously gave Ragnarok ready to be ported to the two companies ages ago. So the two companies, Abstraction and Instinct, have had the Ragnarok sort of map for a while to get implemented into the game. So I think this has been carefully planned and hopefully it's much better planned than it was for Primitive Plus last year when that was actually delayed on Xbox. Fingers crossed guys, fingers crossed. I'm trying to be a bit more hopeful, I'm trying to be a little bit less shouty and ranty. I know sometimes that might go up and down a little bit and you guys might be like, oh one minute you're grumpy, one minute you're not. But that's just the way the game is. It makes me good, it makes me happy, and sometimes it makes me like... Rrr. So there we go, done and dusted. Don't forget tonight I'm doing a live charity stream helping out some friends who are raising for money for a really good cause. All you have to do today is just watch as many of my videos as possible. All the money that I generate from today is actually going towards the charity. So the more you watch my videos, the more money you put in towards actual going to a charity to help with mental problems and uh, feelings of helplessness. If you want more information, go and check out my video here. 
and I'll be live 8pm tonight. I'm going to be playing a bit of Overwatch, a bit of Ark, and maybe 7 Days to Die. So, I'm Jay Plays Games. I will be back the minute I get some substantial news, any concrete information about the latest updates, and I will see you ratbags later.